Get your company off grid. How can you do that? Reduce your carbon footprint, reduce your reliance on the grid and go green as a business. Well, that's what we're here to talk to you about today. We're here at Nimbus Hosting and we are helping them to get off grid as much as possible. So let me show you how we're doing it and what data we need to gather in order to get accurate information. We're here today at Nimbus Hosting. They have a big solar array on the roof, but they don't have any battery storage and they want to significantly improve their carbon footprint by storing a lot of the excess energy that they're producing with the solar array into a battery and using that battery to run the building at night when there's no solar being generated. But in order to do that, we need to know how much are they exporting, if any? How much are they generating? How much are they using? And we're here today to gather that data in order for us to correctly size the battery. So let me show you how we do it. Now I've got a bit of a confession to make. Today, we were supposed to actually be installing the battery storage. And the reason was we thought we had accurate data and we sized a nice battery storage system ready to install in this room. However, on Friday, I came to do a preliminary site visit just to double check all the details. And we made a shocking discovery. Let me show you what it was. So the Solar Edge system that was installed a year ago should have been gathering data about the installation, how much the customer's solar array is producing, how much the customer is using, and how much they're exporting or importing from the grid. And we had nearly a year's worth of data that we used to size up the battery storage system for here. But when we got here, we found that the original installer had not set up the monitoring system correctly. And I posted about it on my Instagram, so I'll show you exactly what I found and what we did about it. According to the Solar Edge app, which I can show you now, they are exporting quite a lot of power. So currently it says they're, create, they're producing 4.6 kilowatts, they're using 1.2 kilowatts, and they're exporting 3.3 to the grid. However, we've got here and we thought, let's connect our power analyzer just to see what's going on. They're using way more than the Solar Edge system is saying. And what we've discovered is that the CTs for the solar edge system have only been put around one board, which is this board here, which has the solar breaker in, and then it has like the air conditioning and stuff, but not around the main panel board, which is what it should do really, because that means that the solar edge system says it's exporting when actually it's quite likely that it's not exporting anything at all. And if they're not exporting, then <laughs> they don't need battery because they're using all the power. So we're kind of back to square one a little bit now where we're saying, okay, let's swap these CTs over to here and get a true reading of whether they're exporting anything or not. Because if they're not, then there's no point for them to waste money on a battery storage system. We need to get the correct data in order to size this system properly, but it's just very frustrating that the original installers did this and they've even They've not used a three phase flex, they've used two single phase flexes to actually run the three phase power from this breaker here. You see how they've done it. They've even used a blue as one of the phases and then just put a bit of tape around it. It's really, really dodgy. Um, so we're gonna get our data logger going now. It is it's going already and recording, but we're also gonna swap the Solar Edge CTs into this main panel board and then get some true readings for a few days to see where we're at and then review the situation. So now that we've put the CTs in the correct place, this is the live reading that we're getting right now. They're producing 3.1 kilowatts of energy right now. It's only 9.40 in the morning and it is a gray day, but they're using 20 kilowatts in the building. So they are importing 17 kilowatts. So obviously there's no export at the moment. So no, if we had a battery here, currently none of the energy would be going into the battery because it's all being used throughout the building, the self-consumption is equal to the production, basically. What we want to look at with the data is, are there moments still when they're exporting? And the whole reason that they contacted us originally was because according to their solar edge system, they were exporting tons of power. So let me show you the previous data and what that looked like. 
So if we go down here, right, this is an example of a standard day on the weekend according to the Solar Edge system. So green is export, blue is self consumption, and red is import from the grid. So basically, the Solar Edge system for the last year has been saying that they were only using about 300 watts per hour essentially overnight, and then during the day they were generating like on a nice sunny day you've got a lovely smooth generation curve here they were generating a huge amount of power so the idea is to capture some of this excess energy store it in a battery and then use it to cover this nighttime use when normally they would be importing from the grid now this is on a weekend so obviously their usage is quite low but if we look at the uh, weekday usage as well this is what it was looking like on a weekday so they were using about two kilowatts they were obviously using from their solar um, as much as they could but then they were still exporting loads so that looks like a perfect use case for storing in a battery however as i said the data is wrong so now we're here we came here on friday and we changed the cts round now we're here back on monday and let me show you what's happened the last few days so this is the chart for Friday, which was a normal working day. And you can see that about here is when we actually changed the CTs round. So it was about uh, 11 o'clock, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. We changed the CTs round and instantly the usage data graph started to change. They have been importing a lot of power from the grid. Now it was quite a dark day. As you can see, the solar curve is not very good. It was very cloudy. Um, so they didn't generate much, but whatever they generated, pretty much they used all of it and they still imported a lot from the grid. So if we were basing just on this, we would say there's no point in installing a battery. However, if we look at the weekend, it gets a little bit different. So this is then Saturday and what happened was they'd left the heaters on. Uh, they realized quickly that the heaters were still on when they shouldn't be. So they changed the timing. Uh, eight o'clock on Saturday morning for the heaters. So that dropped their consumption right down, which is good. Shows the value of having this data. And you can see now that they're actually were exporting quite a lot of power over the weekend. Then in the evening, they were importing about one to two kilowatts of energy per hour. There is definitely a use case over the weekend to have that battery storage to cover the nighttime use. Now let's look at Sunday, which is obviously a little bit more uh, stable so you can see this this base use overnight and then it kicks up and down a little bit there's a little spike there but they did generate quite a lot of excess energy with the solar system which then they could have stored in a battery and used overnight here now that solar edge data now that it's accurate is already good it gives us a real good basis to start building up a better picture of the use case in the building but we can go even further than that with this power analyzer and data logger that we installed on Friday because this will give us accurate data about the use per phase which in different installations can be quite out of balance so what we're going to look at now is are the phases balanced or is there a lot more use on one particular phase? In which case, when we size our battery storage system, we might look at installing more battery power on one phase than on the other phases. Let me show you that. So you can see here L1, which is phase one, is reading 33 amps at the moment. L2 is reading 15 amps and L3 is reading 11 amps. And this is what we found on Friday as well, that L1 was getting up to around the 40 amp mark, L2 and L3 had a lot less load on them. Now, if we were to install a standard three phase battery storage system, it would pump out the same amount of power across all phases. So what it would do is it would pump out the maximum amount of power needed to cover the usage on the highest use phase. And then these two phases, for example, it would actually be exporting power from the battery on those two phases, which is not really ideal. So what we're gonna look at is potentially putting single phase batteries in, three single phase batteries, and putting say a 20 kilowatt hour battery on phase one versus a 10 kilowatt hour battery on phases two and three, depending on the data once we've built it up over a few weeks. Now this Chauvin our new PEL103 doesn't just log current, but it logs voltage as well, and it logs power so we can see here l1 is reading 246 volts l2 is slightly less 243 
and L3 is reading 247 volts. How do we get those voltage readings and how do we get those current readings? Let me show you how it works. So these are what we call CT clamps. Now normally CT clamps you might know from the EV charger installations that we do are kind of like a hard square thing that clips around the phase. These are what we call flexible CTs. They're really cool, you can just clip and unclip them like that and it means they can fit around very large conductors but it also means you can fit them in quite awkward places too. So these are really, really flexible. So we've connected one on each phase and that is reading the current that's passing through each phase. But we're also monitoring voltage inside the distribution board here. So let me show you that. So to get the voltage measurement, we clip uh, one of these crocodile clips onto each phase. So what we've done is just clipped it onto the bus bar here on phase uh, phase two. This one we've clipped on on phase three. This one we've clipped on on the neutral. And actually phase one we've clipped it on into this distribution board because we didn't have a point of access here. Now if it, if it was safe to actually leave the board cover off, then they provide us with these really cool little um, devices which basically magnetize onto the screw of the circuit breaker. So you can actually magnetize that on like that and then just clip your lead straight in using the normal lead connection and that will give you all your readings. So you can just clip on to the different terminals on the breaker like that and it magnetizes on and it gives you your reading. And you could even do it on the main switch for example. So we could put our neutral on there, L1, L2, L3, like that. And if we were able to safely leave the board cover off, we could just have our leads trailing down like this. Obviously, the way this is now, we can't put the board cover back on so it doesn't work. Um, and we do need to leave the board cover on because this room is accessible by staff members who aren't electrically trained. But I really like this, it's a cool little gadget, great little design idea. So we're taking voltage measurement here current measurement there and together that data gets processed within the power and energy logger and it gives us other readings too. For any electrical contractors who are going into the renewable sector and thinking of sizing up batteries for their clients, this is an absolute game changer, this kind of equipment. And Chauvin and New have kindly sponsored today's video. So if you'd like to head to the link in the description and find out more about this product and the other products in the Chauvin New catalog, then head to that link below. So these are the other readings that we are generating with this device. So I think this is the total power usage that we have uh, had so far. So you can see that's ticking up there. So far 359 kilowatt hours since we actually installed the device. So not only do we have the amperage per phase, but we've got the neutral current as well, which is really nice to see. So we can see that there's 20 amps of current on the neutral. Now, if all these three phases were completely balanced and reading the same, like in the case where you've got three phase motors and things like that, then that neutral current would be almost zero. Um, and let me know in the comments if you know why that is the case. It's quite an interesting bit of science behind that. So the voltage will fluctuate depending on the loading on the particular phases, not just here, but on the grid in general. So it is normal to have a bit of variation between phases. Um, and also here, we've got the actual phase to phase voltage as well, which is really nice. So we can see that between L1 and L2, we've got 424 volts, L2 and 3, 425, L3 and L1, 429 and that we've got the correct phase rotation, and this is around 50 hertz, you know, 49.96, which is what you would expect. Now, another benefit of doing this power and energy uh, survey is that we can log the power factor, which is basically how efficient the system is. Now, in commercial properties like this, they could get penalized by their energy supplier with extra charges if their power factor goes below a certain level, which is typically about 0.95. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the details around power factor, but I will leave a link in the description to a video that can explain it way better than I can. But essentially, the KVAR, the reactive power, is kind of wasted power. 
kilowatts is what they're actually using and benefiting from. And what you want is to minimize the wasted power as much as possible. So the power factor, the closer you get to one, the better it is. The further you get to one, the worse it is. So 0 0.97 is actually a very good power factor. Um, some industrial properties, they might go as low as like 0 0.7 because of various devices that they've got connected. But we really want as high a power factor as possible. And this is a very good indication. So what we want to do ideally is be able to remotely access this data while it's logging so that we can build up a picture over time and we can just check in regularly, make sure everything's working okay. So I'm going to connect it to the network and then as we're at a network company, uh, they can set that up for us so that we've got remote access. In terms of downloading the data, obviously we can get a network connection to download it like we've done. There are options as well. So there's an SD card that comes with it. That'll download the data and record it onto the SD card constantly. But you can't just unplug the SD card while it's recording, quickly download the data and shove it back in there again. So the other option is a USB connection that will connect directly to a PC. And then you can download the data and they have software which will then download and analyze that data and put it into graphs and charts for us. So we've got the data now logged onto the computer here in the, in the program. And this is the data from the last three days we can see. The dates are out because I forgot to reset the date on the device. But essentially you can see all of this graph gives us a really accurate, uh, this is actually every one second it takes a measurement. And then you can do a 10 minute measurement as well if you want a slightly less accurate. Um, but it's really interesting to have all these figures and we can see, for example, the maximum amount of current that was drawn on phase one is 45 amps, maximum on phase two, 27, maximum on phase three, 23. So we get a really good indication of uh, what is going on in the building and that's just from three days. What we're gonna do now, we're actually gonna leave it for four weeks and we're gonna log the data and then come back for a follow-up video. Make sure you like and subscribe where we actually go through the data that we've built up over the last four weeks and see what we've learned from it. Now let's talk about the battery. So when it comes to the battery storage here, we've got different options. And until we know the data, we won't be able to decide for sure which option we're going with. But originally we planned a three phase battery um, and what we were gonna do is mount it on this wall. So we were gonna mount an AC coupled battery which has uh, an inverter for it basically and then a stack of uh, batteries on this wall. Now it is a plasterboard wall so what we need to do is reinforce this wall with some backing wood to make sure it's really solid and then we could put all the batteries on there. But now that we're looking at the fact that maybe the phases are out of balance and stuff it might be better to install a larger battery on one phase versus another. What I'm thinking of doing is actually going with the solar edge system and installing three separate single phase battery systems. That way we can size a slightly bigger battery on phase one if we want to, to make the most of the capacity across the three phases. Because a three phase battery storage system will just discharge the same amount of power across all three phases. So with that in mind, I'm thinking of maybe doing a floor mounted system. Because of the weight, obviously we can't put three batteries on that wall on three different phases with three inverters. It's just gonna to be too complicated. But we might be able to do a floor mounted battery system. So Solar Edge do these uh, power banks that you can have a floor stand for them. And what I'm thinking is if we ran like a uni strut around from the ceiling to the floor with a cable tray on, we could run all the cables down that and then we could fit three batteries potentially here or four, maybe we could do two 10 kilowatt hour batteries for phase one and then one 10 kilowatt hour for phase two and one 10 kilowatt hour for phase three. With three inverters maybe mounted on some uni strut or something like that. We could have it all floor mounted. The weight would be evenly distributed on the floor. That could be quite a good option, but let me know what you think, guys. I'd love to know your guesses as to what size battery storage system we're going to need here uh, on our, how much battery storage for each phase and how much in total. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you've got any ideas or recommendations of what you would do, we'd love to hear your thoughts as well. 
So I showed it on my Instagram video, but this is something that we'll probably need to fix because they've just wired this three phase breaker up with two single phase flexes. You can see these two here. So phase, uh, phase three, L3, they've just wired it in blue and just put a bit of brown tape around it. It's not ideal. Really what it needs is a little bit of one mil five core flex going from here through to here, which is for the Solar Edge uh, mod bus that reads the, the data from the CTs. So a little bit of tidying up is in order when we come back. The other thing that we need to note is to add an additional circuit for the battery storage we will need either three single phase ways spare or one three phase way now we do have two spare ways here and one here but this is on phase three and this is on phase three and this is phase two so what we probably need to do is move this breaker over to here and then that frees up three ways across the three phases that we can use so what we're going to do is just have a little look above the ceiling just to see about running the cables from this distribution board over to the batteries if we do do them floor mounted. Wow. <laughs> Never look above suspender ceilings. You see beautiful, everything beautiful below the suspender ceiling and above it's like pure chaos. This is what we've got. So there's a trunking here that goes down there. So we could potentially run from the board in that trunking up above this ceiling and then along the trunking here then along that beam and then drop down through the um, ceiling with some kind of uni strut clamped onto that beam maybe or we could use this cable tray although it's pretty full that cable tray there is pretty full so i don't think we'll be able to use that um, but we can run something up here anyway i mean it's just chaos look at it but this is classic of suspended ceilings unfortunately they sort of use it as a way to just hide the hideousness that's above the ceiling and those cables are like so tight they're like uh, guitar strings <laughs> but anyway <laughs> please ignore it we will put ours in nicely at least So just to tell you a little bit about the solar system here, they've got 49 Jinko 365 panels with optimizers. That all feeds into a 16 kilowatt solar edge three phase inverter. And this is just basically the, the kind of schematic for when they installed it. So it's quite a decent sized solar array, but obviously if they're using all of it, then that doesn't really help us in terms of the battery. But if they are exporting a lot, then it definitely does help us. We're gonna look at the opportunity maybe to add more panels on the roof as well. So we'll pop to some drones, drone footage and we'll show you what the roof looks like. So I'm back in my office now and I've got the results. We've removed the data logger and we've been able to analyze the data and it's really fascinating. This Chopinar new software is absolutely fantastic. It enables you to go in really deep and you can get 10 minute summaries or you can even get one second measurement so I can see what's happening every second in the installation, which is fascinating. Now, one of the great things that I can see from this is the fact that the phase loading is different. That is very helpful because it means when sizing the battery, we can potentially look at adding more battery storage on phase one than phases two and three. But the other thing we could do is think outside the box and, and think, hey, what about if we try to rebalance the phases for the customer? Can we shift things around a bit in the distribution boards to balance out those loads and that's something that we can discuss with the customer and see if it's something that they would like to pursue. So all of this data is superbly valuable in helping us to plan this future project and make sure we get the absolute best solution for our customer. The other thing that we've seen, which is obviously really important, and I did suspect this as well, is that the export on this project is only really happening on the weekends. Now that's at the moment, it is obviously the data that we've got has been 
basically for the whole month of October. So the sun is obviously less than it would be in the summer, but still the base load of the property, especially during the day, is quite high. And it, it means that they're not exporting anything during the day most of the time. So battery storage definitely would be helpful on the weekend. But what I'm actually going to do is encourage the client to get more solar panels put on the roof. And the reason for that is that really they need to increase their generation in order to maximize what they're producing and then maximize their self-consumption and then batteries will be even more beneficial. So all of this is possible thanks to this accurate data that we have by having done that month of logging with the Chauvin Arnu Power Energy Logger and I'm super happy with it. I think it's an absolutely brilliant bit of kit and to be honest I could do a whole deep dive video on the data. It is amazing how much information it gives you. Kevin from Chauvin Arnu has been brilliant and he did a video call with me and he talked me through a lot of the things that he's seen from the data uh, which is really fascinating and I'm sure as I start to use this on more and more projects I'll get used to looking for patterns and seeing what we can learn. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments guys if this would be something that is useful to you and do you use power energy loggers uh, on a regular basis yourself? I'd love to know all your thoughts but massive thanks to Chauvin Arnu and if you want to find out more about their products and what they do there are links in the description particularly they've got their own YouTube channel definitely worth heading over to their YouTube channel and subscribing to that. So there's a link in the pinned comment where you can do that. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video. If you have, make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.